And we are live <coughs> on the starting soon screen. I think I will try to store these eggs somewhere. So I will briefly fuck off to deal with that. Yeah. Testing one, two, three. Ah, I am still audible on the screen. I shouldn't be. Neither of us should be. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Ah, delightful. At the sarcastic delightful.
Why her running back? We're uh, still audible. Horrid. Hmm. I don't know how or why, but we are still audible on the screen. Da 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 da. Uh, me being much quieter than you. Okay. Maybe that will do anything. <coughs> it didn't. Oh, that's horrible. Baby, 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 ba 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 ba. Wah ho! Here we are, with our normal, normal Pokemon stream, and our mic that totally hasn't just broken. <laughs> <coughs> I don't know what's happened, and maybe I never will. This will just be the order of the world now. Apparently. <laughs> Yeah, this screen is working just fine. It's just the, the one we're supposed to be muted. Yeah. Oh yeah, I went out and did a bit, little bit of off-screen grinding. We did we did a little off-camera grinding. So, uh... We've got our team of Xiaokui, and Tama, and Blasphemy, and unnamed Sligu, and, uh... We've got... <laughs> yeah, we have, a. Uh, we have a few new faces here that were added <laughs> added a few minutes before stream started. <laughs> oh, don't tell them that. <clears throat> I already said it in Town Crier. Oh. <laughs> this dog is taller than me. Shelgo is just the smallest out of all of them. <laughs> yeah. Except for Tama. Tama, and, yeah. And Tama still has a, a very large head. It's a big head. Tama the tiny. <laughs> I love their little faces. Yeah. You can tell this one's a girl because it's ear feather, it's shorter. Ba -ba -ba, ba -ba. Whoops. <laughs> Haven't seen any of them except the psych Pokemon. What do you mean by the psych Pokemon? Oh, we have a name for the Sligu? Oh! <laughs> oh, Alakazam! <laughs> Our oh, we don't have an Al We don't have an Alakazam. Our tax! Our tax! Our tax! You're sinking! Our tax! Our tax! You're sinking! <laughs> <laughs> Artax! Look at me, Artax, you're my best friend! I love you! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Jay has forcibly made my outfit look more reasonable <laughs> for the weather that we are about to traverse yeah. into. It wasn't- I, I was make. I made every attempt to make you still look fruity. Um, I just made you a bit more- a bit more reasonable for the cold weather. Eh. Eh. It's the 
one that's got a little marker on it. Yeah. Hmm. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, who's our, who's our lowest level idiot? Blasphemy? Yep. Okay. So we're just gonna grind until Blasphemy is level 50, which I don't think should take terribly long. Blasphemy has ground, rock, and water attacks, I think? Mm. Let, me, let me see a second. Yeah, ground, water, and rock. Oh yeah, alabasters are rock. Oh, is it? Yeah. It's gypsum, okay. Is ground is good against water, grass, and ice. Good. Rock is good against fighting, ground, steel, water, grass. Water is against, good against. Um... Nope, I'm looking at, look, looking at it the wrong way. Ground is good against poison, rock, steel, fire, electric. It's flying, but fire. Okay, so yeah, a lot of these guys will be weak to rock moves because that's good against ice. And water is good against water is good against ground and rock. So ice, ground, and rock types will be the easiest for Blast Me to take out. Mm-hmm. It's always best to fight things that you're strong against because you get the same amount of EXP points regardless of their type. It's only based on level. <clears throat> so you'll get way more XP points if you have if you're beating up things that are weak to you. Mm -hmm. As opposed to trying to fight stuff that you're weak against. So the, the reason I'm saying that is because there's a, a bit in Sword and Shield where the fire type gym leader is training in a cave that's full of ground and water types. It's like, oh yeah, you know, fire types are weak to them, so this is a really good place to train. And I'm like, that's not how that works. <laughs> that's the opposite of how that works. How did I become the Pokemon? Uh, I did You don't, you're- <laughs> It's like, it's, just... my, it's my Uber driver. You're in the little backpack. Yeah, like, see, there's- I, I'm in the backpack. This is my Uber driver. I have many different Uber drivers, like bear and horse. And there's a fish, but we're not in the water, so that doesn't matter. And they all do slightly different things. The Deer, weird deer, can jump and run very fast. Um, Lady Sneezer is a bit slower, but she can climb. Lord Ursaluna is the slowest, but can dig things up and will run really, really fast when it senses something that it can dig up. And then, of course, Lord Basque Legion is a fish. And can swim. <laughs> It's also able to double jump, but that's kind of situational. <clears throat> yes, they're all um, nobles, so they're they're like they are kami, which the best way I can translate that is they are is minor gods, basically. Um, uh, Arceus, the big boy god, uh, Baja blasted their ancestors a, f a fuck thousand years ago, and all of their descendants ever since have been a little god-touched. So that's why you can just summon them out of nowhere and they teleport. 
they're they're like they're like little mystical animals. Um, and there are two of them per region, and there are two wardens who care for there are wardens who care for each one of them. It's a whole thing, um, but basically that's why they can teleport, and that's why they can, they're a lot bigger than their normal counterparts, and have all like the fancy white and gold ornamentation on their. Um, saddles and the like. Saddles or bag. Lady, Lady Sneezler just puts you in a little rucksack and you gotta deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a rucksack with the symbol of Arceus, who is god in this. A, a god rucksack. kind of funny. <laughs> a little, a holy rucksack. <laughs> <laughs> this kidnapping was ordained by god. <laughs> No, so we're we're about to fight Lord Avalon, which is um, a large, a very large man. So we're uh, we're beefing up our guys a little bit. The whole the whole thing is, like I said, there are two there are two nobles per, per area, and in each of the five areas, one of the nobles has become frenzied, which means they're just kind of attacking things willy nilly and are rather angry and more powerful. And our job is to go and quell the frenzies. And whichever noble of the area is not frenzied helps us out by giving us transport. So in this area, the frenzied noble is Lord Avalog, which is basically a walking glacier. You can see how this might be a problem in an area that's surrounded by snow when the walking glacier wakes up and decides to cause problems. <clears throat> Whoops. Mm -hmm. They're like siblings. Um, they're not siblings. They're not related because they're all different species. Um, they're co-workers. At the moment, nobody knows what caused them to become frenzied. Um, they just got it's a little... a whole thing of like... They just got a little EBDB'd. Yeah. They have zoomies, but if zoomies meant murder... It's like if you had a pet lion that got the zoomies, you know? <laughs> a snow ride just ran away and then the and then Shalko just looked back at me. <laughs> <laughs> like what what am I supposed to do with this? The Glalie won't ru won't run away. They'll actively try to kill you. Oh boy. Like that I alpha Glalie over there. I, I hope I can fight this small man without the larger man noticing the noticing there's a problem here. You should be able to. <clears throat> Why would you fight yourself, small man? Implying that small man is a floating head of ice. Sometimes you must discover your the truth of your own self through violence. <laughs> oh hey, there's just a giant man in the corner. Oh yeah. That'll be really good to fight with Jacques. Ja mm -hmm. Cause uh, it's 4x weak to fire. Nice. <laughs> you can probably just use use flamethrower. You've only got two uses of overheat left. I'm doing a thing where I end the fights as quickly as possible until I run out of stamina <laughs> and then just go back to the camp, rest up, and then I'll repeat this. <laughs> Alright. Oh, it sees you. Yes, it sure does. <clears throat> No, this is a good good use for oh no, never mind. You have been perceived. Yeah, it's now you're <laughs> yep. I got hit with the got with a cartoon hammer. 
Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm getting hit with the cartoon hammer again. Oh, it killed itself doing so, though. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like something beholding ish. Uh, you didn't. Oh, okay. Please don't use those. They're very hard to get. Oh, okay. That's that's the full restore, regardless of points. Okay. Just, just use the the um, potion or super potion. Please. <laughs> oh, whack. The giant float. The, the big boy head disappeared. Oh, no, it's still there. You can take these guys down with flamethrower, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> Anxiety and social for your guy. Oof. Yeah. Don't worry. Uh, I don't know if this will help, but do not worry. You are not being perceived. Only, only, only the boy is being perceived. So I want—I want to preface this. Yeah. I, I'm asking this as someone who does enjoy horror to a certain extent. But if you already have a lot of anxiety and paranoia, why the fuck would you listen to something like the Magnus Archives? Like, this is not a judgmental question. This is not a, you are stupid for doing this. This is a, I'm legitimately curious as to what the appeal here is. Probably because it's not a live format. That, that's not... Drive kills and not get, like... A feeling of catharsis through someone else experiencing the same kind of fear. Good lord, the Alpha Glaley just teleported behind me. <clears throat> okay. I suppose that makes sense. I, I, while I do not feel the same way, I can understand the concept. Oh, lordy. Goodbye. Oh, one super effective move. Let's go. <laughs> I tried to give you the best moves I could. Um, Tama only has Swords Dance because it didn't have a lot of different move typings. Yeah. So. Ooh, Grit Grapple. Happy. Also, now is probably a good time to teleport back to the... Yeah, um, I'm just getting to... Trying to find a place where I won't be murdered at the moment I go AFK. Uh, you also have to imagine anything you can say subconscious break into 
Yeah, no, like, I... Like, I, I experienced one single horror-themed podcast, and I had, like, proper nightmares. And I'm never listening to it again, ever. It fucked me up permanently. And then it's like, oh yeah, I really listen, enjoy listening to, like, Magnus Archives or, or Welcome to Night Fair. And I'm like, are you guys okay? Um... It is a bit fucking obscure. Um, so, for a little bit of context, I am a very big fan of classic, old-style Doctor Who. And after that was cancelled in the 80s, people um, went, yeah, but what if we just kind of kept making it? And so, a group called Big Finish hired a bunch of the actors that were on the show and were like, hey, you want to just keep making episodes in the form of, like, radio show kind of stuff? Because podcasts weren't a thing yet, but they basically invented a type of podcast where it was just a audio play. Um, and this was... I don't remember what the name of it was. But... Um, it was one with the Seventh Doctor, and it just, it fucked me up, man. It fucked me up. It's like some ex psychological and existential horror bullshit. No, that's actually completely unrelated. So, the show was, wasn't cancelled until the 80s. But back in the olden days, and is as in like still in black and white, nineteen sixties olden days, um, video or like um, film reels were really expensive. So what what they did, and what everyone in the BBC did, was after an episode is aired, you just reuse the film reel because no one's going to be able to watch it again because reruns weren't really a thing, um, and they kept the audio of it. Because that was not as expensive to make. But we legitimately just do not have the video of it because no one kept an official copy. The only reason we have any of them is because people pirated them. Um, like, literally, those first six seasons would not exist without people pirating them. Um... And a lot of people who put a lot of work into reconstructing the episodes using, like, behind-the-scenes photos, like, really blurry photos of what we have left. Um, they'll use, like, anim they'll, they'll create animations. Um, and, like, they will do everything they can to reconstruct the vi visual aspect of the episode. Um, they're, I, I've seen those reconstructions. They're amazingly well done. And it's all, like, they're not getting paid for this. This is all, like, a, a you know, passion project kind of shit. Um, and thankfully people, like, did start officially keeping the film, um, after 1970. Um, because there was a kind of, like, a mini, a mini reboot in 1970 where they had a new cast it was all in color um like they changed some stuff with the plot um like one of the main things was that uh it was all set on earth rather than being like all about in time and space because they could not afford to make new sets all the time because they were having to pay for it being color um but at, when they started doing that, they also started keeping the film reels because, yep, that was their doctor. Because that, the whole thing was, it was all set in, on Earth in Unit, so that was like one set they could reuse all the time. Um, and they didn't need to make an alien planet, they could just go to an actual real life place to film. And, and all the episodes are a little, they have a little bit of a bottle, bottle episode feeling, where it's like, you don't realize that it's all taking place in the same few sets, because they make it work really well. Um, 
But since then, they started keeping the film because color is freaking expensive, and they weren't going to just throw away color film, because you can't, you also can't rewrite over it like you could with black and white. Um, so it's only those first six seasons that we are missing pieces of. Um, with one exception, um, The Ambassadors of Death is partially black and white because we don't have all of the color recordings of it, but we do still have the full episode, just not in color. Um... God, it's so nice talking about this with someone, and not only that, someone who like actually has a basic understanding of it. I spent so much of my life desperately looking for another person who watched and enjoyed classic Doctor Who. So, like, my, my 15 year old self is being validated and is also pissed off in the matter of like, why could I not have met you like half a decade ago? <laughs> Anyways, uh, here's the yeah. here's the fish mount. This is number four of our of our funny little guys. <clears throat> oh, there's just, oh a, really? there's just a rufflet right here, yeah. huh? Yeah. Let me, let me let me try and go for it. She had a marathon. Oh yeah, I've 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 marathoned it twice now. I think. Okay, Good I think... a little bit other old ones. Yeah. Literally inducted by force. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's pretty easy to watch all the Eighth Doctor episodes in it. <laughs> it's not hard. Uh, for context, Anor, the Eighth Doctor yeah. only has literally one movie. <laughs> <laughs> which, interestingly enough, it's a movie owned by Fox, which is now owned by Disney. Omg, Disney Doctor Who when? Yeah. The books are pretty good. Yeah, there's, well, there's the, the novelization of the episodes, and then there's the Eighth Doctor books, which are... My god, are they so much. Um, the, I, I don't, is, is, is Andy take up cultist in our, in the white writing group, or like within... I, I imagine they're in the group chat. There, that's a half stack. Okay. Um... Well, anyways, there's a passage that I, I referenced in one of our more recent chapters, and I, I, I also put in Deplore the exact excerpt that I was referencing. And that excerpt is from one of the Eighth Doctor books called Alien Bodies by uh, Lawrence Miles. Miles Lawrence? I can't remember. I think it's Lawrence Miles. Um, and, like... I cannot even describe- I am not smart enough for those books, to be honest. Like, I had to stop reading because I, I wasn't smart enough for them. They're just- they're amazing books that I, I've never been able to fully appreciate, I'll admit. But the people who do understand them and do appreciate, like, it's a tiny fandom, but it's a very good one. In part because, like... Philosophy or technical? Philosophy, yeah. Um, like, for example, one of the simple concepts is the introduction of the Faction Paradox. And the way that people are inducted into the Faction Paradox is they have to go back in time and kill their past selves to become a living paradox. And they wear the skulls of alternate versions of themselves. This is the introduction to them. It gets weirder and more complicated from there. That's just the start. Just to give you a bit of understanding. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, like, if I took the time to really sit down and process it, I probably could understand it. Is that an Alpha Swin up? Catch it, catch it, catch it, catch it! Ooh. Catch it, we can have an Alpha Mama Swine! Is the point of becoming a living paradox? Um... <clears throat> 
It's basically the equivalent of putting up a Satanist poster in your Catholic house. <laughs> this was probably the first time I saw anyone validate the kind of fucked up psychiatric trauma experience. Yeah, there's a lot of that. Of like, hey, we're gonna examine the ramifications of some really fucked up shit. It's very much like rebelling against the system, not because, j just out of virtue of, we don't like the system, so we're gonna do the stuff they don't like. Ah, be very careful. I thought at the time we were just covering our own skulls. I would not be surprised if there are some of the higher members that do that kind of shit. Okay, at least in time here, like, well, not not just that. Like the skulls are like they don't look like, um, quote unquote human because it's like human looking aliens. They don't look like normal skulls. They look like just. Bizarre warped creatures from because they're from a timeline where that is legitimately what Gallifreyans look like. They are just horrid and warped and monstrous. And so by wearing those skulls, it's not only a, you know, I have done something irreparably and terrifying to time, but also this is what you could be, and you need to face that in forcing them to face the reality that they are not as advanced and civilized as they like to think, there will always be realities where they are monsters. <clears throat> so they, they are... Like, their whole thing is making themselves as taboo as possible. I, I should note... Uh, it's mad symbolic. Oh yeah, there's some heavy freaking symbolism. Um, the Year of Intelligent Tigers is probably the most heavy symbolism ever. The whole entire book is written in the form of a song, basically, or like a song structure. It, it's so freaking fascinating and deep and absolutely gorgeous, like, um, imagery and whatnot. Oh, so it's like an epic. No, it's more of like it's the sentences and words aren't structured in that way. It's more of the formatting, I guess. It's been so long and I, I only barely remember this stuff. But like I just remember the whole book was like music symbolism. Um, I'll now be approaching the plot. The plot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that we're forced to see in this man's horrid, horrid chest hair. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was a real slog. Uh, fighting through those miserable icy winds to reach this desolate bit of, uh, desolate bit of nowhere. Well done, us. This gentleman is Avalog's warden and my most honorable teacher, Garrick. So show some respect, Adamant. <laughs> Who wants to be horrid chest hair man? <laughs> Let's begin with some proper introductions. I am Garrick. I serve as one of the Pearl Clan's wardens. And you must be boy, right? Of the galaxy team. Answer me this, would you? On what grounds do you come here seeking to quell Lord Avalog? That leads to my next question. What is wrong with him being frenzied?
then I have another question. Setting aside any orders, what is it your heart tells you to do? Our mighty Lord of the Tundra, Avalug, has done nothing to trouble any person or Pokemon. Sir, please try to keep your cool. For now, indeed, Avalug's causing no trouble. But aren't we also duty-bound to free our people from living in fear that such a colossal Pokemon might begin to wreak havoc at any moment? We are. There's certainly some logic to that. But if that is what you hope to accomplish, then we must judge whether this child is up to the task. Who cares about the grandstanding? Let's get to battling. My musculature is as hard as you as I You think you can break through? <laughs> it's just doing squats. <laughs> yes, he, he did shave his hair like that. I need you to understand that that is the that is the clan symbol of where he lives. So this is like a man shaving the American flag onto his chest. <laughs> I never thought about it like that, but oh my god, you're right. Okay, which one do you think I should worry about first? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards the frostless. Good luck, have fun. I'm gonna go get some more chips. Crowd, how do I how do I how do I switch which Pokemon which Pokemon I'm focusing on? Whoops. Mm. Um. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna. Dorman must retreat into the into the sunset. <laughs> Outstanding. I was tough as an iceberg, but you smashed me through and through. Garrick, would you like to rephrase that? Garrick, there are children present. I suppose you all can get on with it now. This one's alright. Thank you, sir. Some may still have their doubts about a stranger like boy, but I'll vouch for him. And if you insist on quelling Avlug's frenzy, you'll want to claim some of that eternal ice he likes and bring it to my lord's seat. Good luck. Eternal ice, is it? For that, you'll need to ha you'll have to be able to fly, which means you need brave bravery. One second. Long story short, you've got to seek out a young lady named Sabi. Tell the long story long. You're not saving any time if we waste it puzzling out what you mean. Even a, is an Ablug one of the Pearl Clan's lords. Seems a bit odd for me to do all the talking. But fine. Listen up. This eternal ice stuff can be found atop Avalug's legacy here. 
But to get there, you'll need my clan's help. Not even Sneasler can climb this surface, let alone a person like you or me. You're gonna have to approach by air. Brave Eerie's help. Garrick once managed to climb nearly to the top of Avalog's legacy, I'll have you know. He says he made it to within six feet of the top. Might makes right. Or, or at least height. And, uh, about Salvi. How do I put this? Even when she's not flying with Braviary... Even when she's not flying with Braviary... She's got her head in the clouds. Well, you'll understand once you meet her. Head to Snowpoint Temple. And you'll probably come across her sooner or later. What? Zabi? My clairvoyance told me that I'd lead you on a chase. Think you can reach me? I see what you meant about Savi, but why would she be up there? Seems you better focus on pursuing Warden Savi. And let me focus on my work how well I still can. Fucking goes to do his damn squats. Well. Yeah, she can't climb up ice. Oof. That's literally the reason why you're getting Braveberry. <laughs> I'm just trying to wrangle what 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 okay, there we go. Child. <clears throat> Hello, my name's Sabi. Nice to meet you, boy. <laughs> I'll do it every single time. <laughs> Please do, it brings me great joy. I've heard about you. You're super talented, right? I bet you're gonna be fun to play with. I know why you're here, too. You want Braviary's help so you can quell Avalok's frenzy, don't you? Well, you'll get it. If you can catch me first. Let's go, Braviary. <laughs> and now it's time for the puzzle section of the game. Well, the puzzle comes a bit later. Now is the go follow small child section. Ooh, wisp. Where? Where? To your right. Eh. Ah. For the right. Yeah, I see it. There it is. Make sure to mark it on the map. Yep. I do. Yeah. Go on. Another one. Cool. Another wisp.
Burb. Boy! <laughs> you made it all the way up here in this cold. But the question is, did you catch me or did I let myself get caught, hmm? Oh, and one more thing. Am I even really clairvoyant? No one would eat no one but me could really know, right? Anyways, the challenge continues. The next stop on our of our merry chase is the Snow Point Temple. But the real question here is, am I really having fun playing with you or am I bored, hmm? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Kick it the baby. <laughs> Kick it the baby. Adamant refusal to animate the bird flying away with her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they did skimp on a lot of the animations for this game, but only for the people, not the Pokemon. They're like, fuck it, you're not here for the people. <laughs> yeah. You're here for the funny dogs. I climb out of the hole, and it's fine. the Pearl Clan settlement. Yes, the inverse of the let's play past the time joke. <laughs> yeah. It's my space. No, it's my space. Well, maybe God will tell us which space is which. <laughs> yeah, okay. They're very, they're very silly little children. I, I love their silly little hoodies. They are very silly. They're like, quite they're adorable. Just the weird, on like the kids. Spartan helmet looking thing. Spartan helmet looking ass. They've got the fucking submiss sideburns because of it. Now we're, I'm gonna invade a person's home. As is my right, child burns. <laughs> Don't say it like that. Jeez. Oh, there's just a hammock in the corner there. Um, how are you? How, how do you get up there? How small child. Up? How do you get up there, King? Trust me, small children can find a way, always. And some funny bunk beds. Uh... And the same guys as before. 
Yeah, well, this one's this one's a Pearl Clan thing now. But uh, Alder on the left is still the same. What's the one on the right? No idea. We'll zoom in. Are you? Bo. I think it's yeah, the I team. No the I think it's is. the team Aqua guy. I mean, that's the only thing that comes maybe? to mind right away. Let me let me stare at him again. Yes, I'll provide a little looky. No, I meant the 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 yeah team Aqua guy. Yeah, this one. No, I'm staring at it on Bulbapedia. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's not... Not at all? I'll just send you... And they've got they've got persimmons drying up here. Cool. Oh, it does kind of fit his older design. Oh, yeah, it fits his older design really well. Oh, like his... His pre... Graphics update his, design? His pre- his pre-glow-up. <laughs> I, I sent you both versions on Discord so you can yeah. see. I, I think, like, the Diamond Clan portrait, it has, like, the Team Magma guy. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And for some reason, Aldor is on the left of both of them. Yeah. I don't know what's up with that, but it is up. Oh, yeah. This one is like, they've, they've got little stairs just embedded in the mountains. Yeah. Makes things a bit more convenient. Yeah. Oh, it's these guys. <laughs> Look. Yeah. Right it's uh, Snow Run and Pilot Swine. Or not Snow Run. Um. Clit. In. Per swine Up. Yeah. Sorry, my brain just broke for a second. They're just chilling in the hot spring. <laughs> and these guys are just... Why does this... Oh, yeah. The page for him explicitly says, like, the portrait in... in Legends Arceus resembles him. Mm. It says, quote... Pokemon Legends Arceus, a portrait of, the, of a man who resembles Archie, is found within the Port Clan houses. The relationship between the two, if any, is unknown. <laughs> two pigs chilling in the hot spring. <laughs> next to each other because they are gay. <laughs> well, now I, I gotta no make, now I gotta make an obligatory hot spring episode in Fossil. <laughs> it's right there. <laughs> No. Let me see, where where am I going? I think we need a sneezler moment. The dog just sounded like a grown ass man for a second. <laughs> Hi again, boy. It's 
nice having someone new here to play with. Safety in numbers or something like that. Anyway, here's Snow Point Temple. I've opened the front door for you. Just a little more chasing left for you to do. But the real question here is, am I really having fun playing with you? Or am I bored, hmm? I heard what Warden Sabi said. If you have Warden Sabi's approval to enter, then by all means do so. But be warned, there are those who cannot solve the, puz the temple's puzzles. Fuck. <laughs> be warned, those who cannot solve the temple's puzzles won't get very far with it. I've heard that the trick is to pay attention to which way the stone statues are looking. Come to think of it, I believe the statues have some sort of patterns on their chests, too. I really wish he didn't just tell you the answer to the puzzle on the way in. Now this is a puzzle called, You Will Have to Memorize the Order of Things. Which unfortunately yeah. I'm pathetic at. Just write it down in the chat. Oh, that's true. By the way, there is a bronze arm right there. Yes, I've seen it. And over there, too. Sure is. What if I just, uh... Oh, I don't get to have the... I don't get to have the zoomy boys in here. That's unfortunate. Sure is. I may yet perish. <laughs> Please move. Please move. Please move. Simply channel a prey animal. Thanks. And then we got rock, and then steel. Very nice. Every time I see the Reggies, I can't stop thinking of that 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 little Pokemon Cry compilation. That's just like, <laughs> Reggies, Reggies, Reggies. <laughs> oh hey, there's a Wisp here. <laughs> Man, this is just a Wisp kind of day, huh? Evidently. <clears throat> And then we got ice. And then we've got rock. Now we got a steel. Yeah. Oh boy.
And then we got rock. And then we got ice. Okay. Ba ba ba. Yeah, be. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, this is gonna be. Have fun. Okay. Uh, new boys. God fucking damn it. <laughs> There's another one over here. <laughs> ah! <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, this is the steel one. And then rock. And then ice. And then steel. And then a rock. Yeah, pay. <laughs> oh, hey. Oh. Oh. Oh, there's just a man there. Sure is. This is where I got Blythe. <laughs> Our good friend Blythe. Well, it is, it is a TH sound because it's Welsh. Yeah. Our good friend Blythe. kinds of Pokemon, man. <laughs> I mean, you say that, but there is actually, like, a way of organizing different Pokemon by bow plan, and one of them is just humanoid. <laughs> Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Are you playing those Pokemans again? Are you winning, son? The other kind. Item. <laughs> Thank you, first time chatter moss ball plant. <laughs> are you moss ball? Are you a Marty Mall? You're a Marty Mall ball. <laughs> That's the only moss ball plant I can think of. Just a pleasant little Marty Mall. Third kind of Pokemon. Literally just an animal. Okay, now I want to pull up the different. Large subgroup dog. <laughs> 
I guess Literally, I'm... there is a list of Pokemon by shape. <laughs> I guess I've been caught, so we're nearly done. That's no fun. Hey, you remember my clairvoyance? It showed me something else. I saw you flying with Braviary. Do you think that'll come to pass? Well, however the future turns out, flying with Braviary isn't easy. If you really want to be able to fly high in the sky, prove to me you're strong enough. Gonna take us on? Yep. Now get ready, because here come Rhyperior, Magmortar, and Electrovar. All three of them. Go! <laughs> so, the different Pokemon categories, since you're now fighting and not in dialogue. Yeah. Pokemon consisting of only a head. Pokemon consisting of the head and legs. Pokemon with fins. So, fish. Real quick Pokemon with an. How do I switch between what guy I'm targeting? <laughs> uh, ZL. Okay. The big bump. Yep, there you go. Um. Pokemon with an insectoid body. Pokemon with a quadruped body. It's shaped like a dog. Pokemon with two or more pairs of wings. Pokemon consisting of multiple bodies. Pokemon with tentacles or a multi multiped body. Pokemon consisting of a head and a base. Pokemon with a bipedal tailed form. Pokemon with a bipedal tailless form. Pokemon with a single pair of wings. Pokemon with serpentine bodies. Pokemon consisting of a head and arms. So that's just a thing. <laughs> This is a simpler way of it. There's orb, orb with legs, fish, ant bug, dog, um, flying bug, many orbs, too many legs, head but tall, um, theropod, a man, bird, snake, geodude. <laughs> I don't know what else to compare that to in real life! What's the little bass going to? Uh, bird. That's the Pokemon with a single pair of wings. So yeah, that includes the Zubat line. Wow, you caught us and you beat us. You've won all our games so far. But Braviary still wants to get to know you even better. Up to the roof we go. Um, Braviary... Kasuyan Braviary's got a psychic typing, doesn't it? Yep. Okay, I want to revive my one ghost Pokemon. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Bit of an odd classification system. Arguably, yeah. But, like, it, it's just, like, classifying them by vague shape slash bow plan, uh, body plan. Um, it's not, like, what's related to each other or, like, <clears throat> what kind of animal they're based on. It's just, what shape are they? You yeah. know?
and is saying I'm way too used to Nuzlocke, so every time someone faints, I low-key panic. <laughs> oh no! Moss ball plant about the classifications. Too many kinds. To me, it's just dog, man, thing. No, that's well, how. How would you classify Braviary? Is that a dog to you? Yeah, I think I can make an okay dog. Yeah, that's fair. All right, Braviary. Why not test out boy's strength for yourself? to just fight a bird. <laughs> Andy says, I mean, the only thing standing in the way of it being a man is feathers. One shot, Braviary, let's go! <laughs> I can't believe Braviary lost. But that's that. Thanks for playing with me. Guess I'll head home now. Bye! <laughs> I was kidding. <laughs> this child makes no sense to me. <laughs> yeah. It's like, Savi, people are dying! <laughs> Sabi, come on, man! She has such very red cheeks. She, she's so rosy. That's like an extreme... high altitude thing. Uh. Izzy Leko has arrived, but is banned from sound by class presentations. <laughs> Is, uh, is not able to partake in our funny jokes. Like, Sabi, people are dying. <laughs> Soundant. Braviary opened its heart and learned well the sound of Wonderwall. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only song we know. You received the sky plate from Braviary. So, just just a warning. Uh, yeah. Braviary does not fly so much as glide. You will get a big jump at the start, and then yeah. it will slowly glide downwards. No, you have more to read. Sorry. It's a slow fall. <laughs> yeah. Sky plate, a stone tablet imbued with the essence of flight. When used on a certain Pokemon, it allows that Pokemon to gain the power of the flying type. And we've got Adamant. Yeah. Thanks, Sabi. Sure. Having Boy fly around with should be fun for Braviary. <laughs> having having Boy to fly around with should be fun for Braviary. Yeah, I'm glad. A world where people and Pokemon live and work together. Tell me, why do you think the lightning that comes from Risk caused these frenzies? Do you think this is Almighty Sinnoh's anger? Or do you think this is a trial it's putting to us? If it is a trial, a trial we prove ourselves worthy. Call the last noble, call Mavalut. And the rift really ought to close. Right? Even if the one who seems to be clear in this trial is a newcomer of you, or a newcomer like you, not one of us who've been living here in Asui for ages now. How come you're playing all wise? I thought you weren't a big thinker, Adaman. Gosh, Zabi. Here for, I can feel history on the move. 
As far as I can see, the one in ushering in this new era is you. So if I stick with you, sometimes that someday I might get to meal mighty sin on myself. The question is, does listening to Adam and fascinate you or bore you to tears, hmm? Anyway, boy, time for you to go soar with Braviary. If you jump from way up here, Braviary can take you gliding just about anywhere. <clears throat> but don't forget to get the Eternal Ice. That's why you need Braviary in the first place, right? Avalog's legacy is down there. Now go get a feel for flying with Braviary. When you're done soaring the skies and want to land, just ask him to dive. <laughs> soaring the skies with Braviary. With Braviary, you can fly up, fly high up into the sky and explore the different areas of Sui from the air. You can summon Braviary using the plus button when, wherever you may be, and you can also press the A button if you're falling from some height to summon him in a flash. <clears throat> so, uh, we're not gonna do the stupid thing where we jump off a cliff and try to save yeah. ourselves. <laughs> well, I'm about to warn you to please not do that. I know the game says we can, but I'm not going to. Thank you. We did it, kids. <laughs> okay, so Literally a hang glider holding on. Yeah. Go on. Eh. Eh. Arc phone moment. Why did the arc phone decide to beep? Well, before we got ice. <laughs> I don't know. Eternal ice, a type of ice beloved by the Lord of the Tundra, Avalog. This ice is said to be the fragments of an ancient Avalog that lived long ago. And it's shaped like a bergamite. <laughs> 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 At last, the summit is conquered. So while we were off doing that, Garrick was just climbing the fucking cliff. <laughs> Apparently. Shirtless. Nips out. Out in the history of winter. <laughs> and I see you made it too. Flew down to this place and obtained the eternal ice, did you? What drives that burning zeal of yours, I wonder? Well, uh, my union benefits are pretty great. Does he have nips? No, I think he they froze off long ago. <laughs> he lost his nips in the war. <laughs> <laughs> you gave Garrick the eternal ice. I do have to respect the effort you've put in. I may still have my own doubts weighing on my mind, but I will make the necessary preparations so that you can face my Lord Avalon. Meet me at Ice Peak Arena. <sighs> Now, don't try to repeat the wondrous feat that you're about to see me perform. A tall leap like this can only be managed by highly toned bodies like mine. Till next we meet. 
<laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Can't believe Garrick's fucking dead. <laughs> Oh wait, hold on. Before before we go into the Avalok fight, we should take a long rest and get all our Pokemon stamina back. <laughs> <laughs> I'll find a landing spot eventually. It's not a very steep dive. <laughs> I'll hit the ground eventually. Bonk. And I go bonk. I mistook the monkey for a piece of salt. <laughs> it was pink and sitting on the ground. I think this is a very inefficient way to reach my destination, actually. <laughs> but alas, this is where I am right now. Oops. Bonk. <laughs> uh, please don't do that again. I uh, I kind of underestimated how far away the ground was when I did that. Evidently. No, oh, hey, there's just a man here. <laughs> can I can I leave, man? Oh, hey, follows here. Why, if it isn't boy? What a pleasure finding a familiar face, or any face, in this far corner of the Alabaster Icelands. I came to bring it Garrick an order of sword caps, and he was more than willing to have a chat about Avalog. What do you say? Interested in a bit of gossip? <laughs> and why wouldn't you be? So, Avalog, yes, the fifth of Hasui's nobles. That he is. And you know what? He's an absolute beast. Well, yes. According to what I was told, not only does he barrage you with chunks of ice, he also fires off massive icicles so he can cause sharp ice crystals. And he can cause sharp ice crystals to erupt from the ground below you. Doesn't that seem a bit too powerful to take on? What's more, apparently the Avalog of old could be up to a hundred feet tall. Doesn't that seem a bit too big to take on? Oh, you'll be alright. You just have to eat some sword caps and give your training your all. Nothing better for building muscle than that. Man's eating the sword cap. Onward now! <laughs> <laughs> 
to the arena. <coughs> Please don't die. Mm, yes, well, I did want to see that Avalog, but perhaps not at the cost of my life. So I suppose my freezing digits and I will be off. Just leave. Real winners quit. <laughs> oh, the man is still here. Yes, the grown man is still here. Oh, oh, there's just a big man over there. I think Garrick just looks at Ingo and it's like, you're too bony. Have some sword caps. <laughs> I don't think anything can make that man buff, though. Whoa, Garrick moment again. Oof, my bones. <coughs> blah, 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 blah. So, we are to quit Lavalug as you wished. In the end, the strength of your feelings won out. Also, your door is open, so you're audible in both ways. Good. Well, I suppose I'd better to get to making some bombs using that eternal ice. I've heard how they are made, and with muscles like mine, it'll... And there you have it. If you truly wish to quell Avalug, then walk on. The path lies before you. But know that Avalug will hurl chunks of ice at you without relent. You'll need unrivaled dodging ability. Boy, here he comes. The big boy. So, uh, we're gonna give it the old college cry, lads. <clears throat> Oop, oop, come on, come on. Uh, there we go, there we go, there we go. <laughs> Let me just take a moment to remember what the dodge button was. Oop, oh, oop, oh, oop. Oh. <laughs>
Oopsie. Come on, come on, get up, get up. The boy is not getting up. <laughs> and I missed the, missed the, because, of, okay, recovery time. The recovery time is wasting the entire stun air. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna throw it. I've got the timing of everything but that last laser, which takes the entirety of its dazed time to recover from. Did it, did it, did it, did it. Come on. Yep, there we go. <clears throat> oh boy.
Come on, come on, endure it, endure it, recover. <clears throat> Damn it. Lost the window. I can get it. I just fumbled the timing of a singular laser and it fucked me up the rest of the way. And then we can endure it. Fumbled the laser. Yeah, I'm just. I know how to do that. I'm just bad at the timing for it. And I missed it. Well, yeah, but I'm bad at doing that without dying, so I just outlast them.
Oof. Got him to the last phase, though. Huh. <clears throat> ah! Did you hit restart? Yes. Did you like me to? Oops. <laughs> Oh, the misery. Oh, the misery.
bro. <clears throat> but I got him to the last friends engage again. And we hope this time I don't accidentally click restart battle. Oof. <clears throat> I'll get there one of these centuries. Ba ba ba. Ba ba ba.
I keep getting him to a sliver and then dying. <laughs> Yeah. <coughs> Oof. Bop. Ba ba ba. Don't eat the yellow eyes. <laughs> okay. I 
icicle plate, a stone tablet imbued with the essence of ice. When used on a certain Pokemon, it allows that Pokemon to gain the power of the ice type. Yeah, sorry, you needn't look quite so downcast. <laughs> Dubious, would you like to name an alpha Pokemon? <laughs> here I am, I am here. <clears throat> but seeing Mighty Avila quelled by such a slight child. A child that fell from the very sky. Is this boy, boy, some sort of monster in disguise? He is no monster. He is the one who risked his life without a second thought in order to quell our frenzied suffering nobles. Boy. Garrett cares for the Pearl Clan with all his heart and believes in Almighty Sinnoh just as deeply. So he has feared more than any of us that getting involved with the Diamond Clan and your galaxy team could cause our people to flag in their devotion to Almighty Sinnoh. <laughs> but that will change. Irida? I know your fears will change once you see what I have seen. Boy has much to teach us. He has shown us how we can overcome all manner of strife so long as our Pokemon are with us. He has made me want to help Glaceon realize greater strength as well, and to see my whole world grow broader. It seems you've already changed, Irida. I knew you could pull that off, boy. You quelled every last frenzied noble. So is that uh, space-time rift gonna start closing up now, or what? There's little way of knowing for sure, though the rift does seem perhaps a little smaller somehow. Let's hope so, anyway. Well, with any luck, things will settle down now. Although, even if the rift does start spitting out more of that strange lightning, we should still be alright as long as we've got... Boy. Indeed we should be. It's good to have him at our side. You know something, Erida? You may never agree on who's got it right about Almighty Sinnoh, but you Crowline folk aren't all bad in my book. Look who's finally seen reason. Anyway, now that we've quelled the last noble, I say we pay grim old Commander Kamado a visit. See if Lagrani finally cracks a smile for us. <laughs> Do you think we could perhaps wrap it up? Yeah. Wait, no. I'm gonna get the get something named and then we'll call it. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Norman says, quote, if you wanna give a name the theme of yellow, I would absolutely love that. Alright. Uh ba 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 ba. Who? Huh? 
Aha. And then I, yup. And then I, yup. And then we call it here. Because, oh lordy, that was a... That was an event and a half. It's an event and a half that did not need to go on as long as it did. But it did, alas. So with that, I say bye. Ah. <laughs> ah. Ah.